Welcome to the Character Chronicles, the people show. Check the Pulse Rescue Nation brought to you by Nebraska Spine Hospital. Ladies and gentlemen, the quarterback position is relatively important if you didn't know. But if you look back just through this past year in sports and the way the game of football is morphing and shaping over time with your RPOs and things of that nature. And I understand the Bucks don't run the RPOs. I'm going to talk about them here in a minute. Okay, but the quarterback position, I think now more than ever, even as we go back and look back through time, if you want to have success, if you want to compete, and you want to be able to compete for championships like the Huskers are ultimately working towards, and we got to go up that staircase of success. We just got to start by getting a winning season, Big Ten West, contention and Big Ten championship game, hopefully down the road at some point, hopefully sooner rather than later, we got to get a quarterback who is the legit guy. Now, maybe he doesn't have to be the GOAT. It'd be great if he was, but a quarterback who's a legit guy. And we got guys in that quarterback room right here, right now, who are talented, who's going to develop potentially into that guy. Now, keep in mind, I'm a former lineman, as you know, D lineman. You know, I'm not one of the old linemen. I was one of the athletic guys on the defensive side of the ball. Take that, old lineman. And I've, I'm the guy that said, offense puts butts in the seats, defense wins games, the trenches wins championships. So keep all that in mind as I go through my diatribe here, talking about the quarterbacks, giving examples of why they're so important, and even more and more important as football evolves and the game evolves and offenses evolve and change over time. Okay, and I do think it, it helps that Scott Frost is going to relinquish some of the play-calling duties to offensive coordinator Matt Lubick, and he's going to be spending more time in a hands-on approach with the Husker quarterbacks this season itself. But let's just look at the Super Bowl. A lot of this is prompted by the Super Bowl and the National Championship games, both what happened in the past month. In the Super Bowl, the Bucs, as you know, had Tom Brady, the GOAT. Whether you like him or not, he's the GOAT, okay? The Chiefs, the other team in the Super Bowl, Mahomes. The best quarterback on planet Earth today. Do you think there's a coincidence? I don't know. Let's go Let's go to the AFC Championship game in the NFL. You got Mahomes. Okay, and then for the Bills, you got Josh Allen, who is one of the three finalists for the MVP award for the NFL this year. All right, let's go to the NFC title game. You got Brady versus Aaron Rodgers, who was the NFL's MVP this year. Let's look at the top teams in college football. How important is this quarterback position? Obviously, it's important. But is it more important now than it's ever been, potentially? Number one team in the country, Alabama, Mac Jones, was the Davey O'Brien Award winner. The top quarterback in the entire country. Okay, the next two on the list, Ohio State, Clemson. The next two highest rated teams in the entire country are Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields. If Justin comes out, probably the two highest uh, drafted quarterbacks in this year's upcoming NFL draft. Now, you look through history. Quarterbacks have always been important. I think it's just evolving more and more over time with the way offenses are being ran. Okay, and the reads and how quickly you have to make decisions and things of that nature. But let's look over the course of history. 97 Huskers, national champions, right? Scott Frost. Now, he struggled in 96. Struggled early on in 97, but his last 11 games of that 97 season, he was a really good quarterback. 95 Huskers had the GOAT, the Husker GOAT, in my humble opinion, the greatest Husker football player of all time, Tommy Frazier, also Brooke Behringer, okay? One of the greatest quarterbacks to ever come through Nebraska as well. 94 Huskers, Tommy Frazier, and thank God for Brooke Behringer in 94. Or there's no 94 national championship. You even look at the 83 Huskers. In my opinion, the greatest college football team of all time to not win a national championship, had Turner Gill, one of the best to ever do it. 70 and 71 Huskers who won national championships, Jerry Taggy. I think it's forgotten just how good he was. Now, there's other great teams throughout Husker history, other great quarterbacks. If I listed them all, we'd be here all day. Okay. The 99 Huskers had Eric Crouch. There, there's another one for you. Now, it is possible to win without a really, really good quarterback. Look at the 2000 Baltimore Ravens, and Trent Dilfer had a heck of an NFL career better than mine. Okay. But the defense carried that team. Ray Lewis carried that team. Okay, those teams are hard to find throughout history without a really, really good quarterback that helped to win and or at least compete for championships. The Bucs just won with a really good defense and Tom Brady, which is really hard to do in today's game. I'll be honest, Nick Saban has even said you can't win without a really good offense in today's day and age. And the Bucs offense rolled, so did the defense. All right, Adrian Martinez, Logan Smothers, okay, the kid out of Kearney Catholic who's the first... In-state Nebraska quarterback to get an offer from the Huskers in like two decades. Everybody else in that room, somebody's got to step up. There's talented guys in there. I can't wait to see how this unfolds and develops. Thanks again to our sponsor, Nebraska Spine Hospital. Ladies and gentlemen, when it's your spine, you do not want to mess around and experience matters. That's why you can trust the experts at Nebraska Spine Hospital, the region's only spine-specific hospital. They are the best at what they do.